Mr. Mo Sarji. I hope I'm saying your name right. Your subs requested that I check in on you, like spiritually, and make sure, you know, everything's fine and dandy with like hauntings and attachments. So that is what I'll be doing in this video. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. I help people with hauntings and attachments and other things as well. But recently I did help Omar Gosh TV and I helped um, Yasko, sorry for saying your name wrong in your video, and then Sam and Colby, specifically Colby, but Colby hasn't seen his video yet. <laughs> over a channel well two separate channels that I did for you they're two separate because the one day I overworked myself and was working 32 hours and I started channeling your information then I got really emotional and didn't know why and I needed a break and then I fell asleep because I was up for 32 hours and then I came back and I came back today so these are like two back to back like two days in a row of channeling for you and I've got like three and a half pages of notes but anyway all of this is channeled from spirit and I feel like you need some healing right now in your life because you're going through some really sad times and I hope I can provide that for you in this video. To start off here, I used There's a Ghost in My House with the Sarji family like channel that you have. I used that video as reference. And I used it at the time frame 3.51, 3 minutes and 51. And you're talking about like, you know, the lights going wonky in the background and you do a clip of it. And, you know, we can see the lights in the background. I'll put a screenshot. I just don't want to get hit for copyright stuff. But yeah, so that's where I started. But so the first thing I noticed was a shadow walking across your upstairs hallway. It was hard to make out at first, but I'll get th when I get through the notes, I'll give you what I, I think it is. At first, it looks like there's somebody holding something long and straight, but then puts it down and then is somewhat walking hunched using the railing as like support. I also keep getting pain behind my ears, which during the first channel, I was kind of sleep deprived. So, okay. And because I'm clairsentient, I'll take on another person's like ailments or whatever they're struggling with at the current time or the time I'm looking back at. So I was curious if maybe you were having issues sleeping because uh, the only time I have like my manic phases where I don't sleep is during the full moon and we are not even close to the full moon. So I know this isn't something from me. Are you not sleeping enough? I'm wondering. I'm going to make that association with the pain behind my ears and not sleeping because I wasn't sleeping and I had the pain behind my ears. And typically when I have pain behind my ears, it's because I'm either wearing glasses or a face mask or headband, or I don't sleep. And the fact that I didn't sleep for 32 hours tells me it's probably something to do with that. Next, I will say, as I was, like I said before, because I had to do this in two separate channels, I felt very like emotional. And I'm actually kind of worried I'm gonna start crying during the video. So I'm sorry in advance. Oh, for whatever reason, I got a quick flash of Big Bird. I think it's from Sesame Street. I don't know, the last time I saw Sesame Street, I was like, what, two? I don't even know. And then separate from that, oh, I see this round-ish entity with buggy, bulgy eyes. And it's just like round. It's got a big mouth with sharp teeth. Very cartoon-like in appearance. It's literally chomping and consuming the negative energy in the space. Now, 
I started noticing a pattern with this type of entity. It is a type of thought form entity. Some people call them poltergeists. Some people call them thought forms. Poltergeists are a type of thought form. So I just say thought form. But it's chomping through the air at the negative energy and consuming it. And it's going to make the sad things worse or any negative feelings that you feel way worse than usual and will try to keep you down in the dumps because it needs that negative energy output to continue to feed off of. I notice that it's in high concentrated areas of negative energy, which I see in a lot of apartment buildings like hotels, cities, but it could just be any area with a high concentration of negative energy. Also, I have two different drawings of it. I drew it the first one, and then I drew the second one thinking I could draw it better, but I ended up liking the first one better, so I kind of cut it out, and I taped it. So there's two pictures, but that doesn't mean you have two of them. It's just I like the one better than the second. But let me see. I know, they look weird. I'm sorry if you can't see. Ah, glare on the tape. Okay. So the one I'm referring to that I liked better was this one. So maybe ignore uh, the bigger one and pay attention to that one because it looked more like that. I like to draw the entities so people can have an idea and maybe it'll validate some things that other people see, especially if you have people that are mediums and don't know it and they're like I saw this and I'll be like is it was it this and they'll be like oh my god okay sorry about that the flickering lights that thought form I would say isn't causing that and the thought form is separate from the thing I saw a like upstairs in that hallway those are two separate things because the thing on the like upstairs it was just a shadow of a person and I didn't get a full like image of what they look like and sometimes like earthbound spirits will come in that way for me depending on like how overworked I am that day or if I'm tired or whatever and I think it's because I was tired um yesterday when I was doing this then yeah so wiring issue something just doesn't feel right with your lights and not just the um upstairs hallway or that foyer where those two giant lights are there's something else it's just weird it's like the wiring or something is funky because the lights are burning out but the thought form wouldn't do that specific thought forms can do that but i'm not seeing this specific thought form doing that to your lights and i feel like it's hot like maybe it's like an overload or hot wires. I don't, I'm not sure. But that is the impression I was getting. Yes, okay, next thing. Head of a pinwheel. So you know the pinwheels that some people put outside for decoration and they spin in the wind and they're like silvery because they're some kind of like, I don't know what they're made out of. You know what I mean, right? I see like the top of one of those spinning. I don't know what it means. It might mean something to you, but I get a bunch of images and we have to put the puzzles together essentially. So either it means something to you or it means something to me. And well, pinwheel like decorations outside is not something I grew up around really. My parents really didn't have that stuff. So it has no correlation to me. So I'm wondering if it has a correlation to you. Um, yeah, so during the second like session of my meditation and channeling, I started getting really drained. Now I know that's from the poltergeist thought form thing. It's doing that to you. So if you're feeling exhausted, your state is so like conflicting because it's like you're tired, but you don't sleep, but like you're drained, but you can't sleep. It's so weird. Uh, sadness again for the second meditation channeling. Again, I feel like crying often. I also feel that you're in an anxiety loop, which again, that is partially caused by the thought form. And it's like you're putting yourself in a state or it's somebody in your household. 
So if I'm saying this and it doesn't apply to you, it could apply to your wife. But there's this anxiety loop and you're putting yourself in a state where you start overthinking or dwelling on things that aren't as heavy as they're made to be, if that makes sense. And it then causes a snowball effect of anxiety to where you get chest pain sometimes or just bad bouts of anxiety. And so when I feel the anxiety of others, it comes to me in the form of chest pain. That's how I'm correlating the chest pain that I'm feeling. And then I, st okay, Claire Gustin's flat, flat, I can never say the Claire smell, like the ability to smell psychically. I forget what that's called, but I started smelling fresh like paint that you would paint your wall inside, which is new for me. Never really experienced psychic smell before. Now, I don't know if you painted your walls in your house recently, or if you're around paint a lot, or touched up something, or someone works around paint, or the house is new. I don't, it's just I smell paint. And that's kind of how I correlate it. So I don't know. Again, you're going to have to validate that and maybe help me figure that part out. I just know I smell it and I don't know why. <laughs> oh, Spirit uh, was showing me an image of an air purifier. Now this could go with this, the paint smell too. So either you need one or you are around them or you need to be around them. Not sure. They want to remind you to wear masks and protection when you go into old and or abandoned places too. Okay, maybe like the smell from the, like that paint smell is like spirit saying you're around these smells and things that's not good for you. You need to, you know, either put a mask on and or need an air purifier. Again, you know, that's something that you might need to assess. Okay. I did see a house and I'm sorry for my bad house drawing. I can draw people well and dandy, but when we come to buildings, I'm sorry. <laughs> this artist is self-taught and I didn't self-teach myself how to do buildings yet. But, so I see this house and I'll show you the image momentarily. But, in the, in, on the, around the property, I see like these energy lines and they're constantly moving kind of like this and there's so many and it's all around the house and property it's an energetic field and some parts have a white glow to it listen some of the things i get make no sense to me and all i can do is relay it and listen i'm still learning as a medium but here is my picture of the house i'm sorry again it's a bad drawing but so you see these wait see these lines now picture this all over the property and over the house. I just didn't draw them in over, over the house because it would get confusing. But one distinct feature of this house, it had like that cool like castle-y look crevice thing in the corner that I, is really cool and I always wanted in a house myself. I'm pretty sure it's an energetic field around the property. And some of it was darker in places and some of it was bright, white, glowy. So I'm suspecting that the darker parts, which were over the house, that house needs cleansed and it's got a lot of residual negative energy. Whereas on the outside of the house, the property, the lines were more like bright and white. That is what I'm going to assume with that. So I think... I don't know what this house means to you if you own multiple houses, but um, I'm seeing that house. It's got some residual negative energy and probably, I think it needs cleansed. It's got some stuff going on with it. Now, next disclaimer. I start describing like people and the thing is when I start channeling and I get information about specific people, if it doesn't apply to you, it most likely applies to somebody in your comment sec or in my comment section or your subs or whomever. Because a lot of times spirit will piggyback and be like, oh, I'm going to jump in here and insert my truth or whatever. And yeah, this happened to me 
before, especially with the Sam and Colby one I did. I had a client that I didn't know I had yet. One of the um, spirits they were trying to connect with intercept me. And yeah, so that can happen. But here we go. I'm, I was seeing a dark-haired, light-skinned male. My guides referenced Hagrid from Harry Potter. Now, I don't know if it has to do with he, he, this person looks like him or his personality is like him, but he has like a Hagrid-esque vibe, if you will. And I did see a dark, like, so he had dark hair, light skin, and he had a beard. And it... I'm wondering if they were referencing Hagrid's beard, but again, I'm not sure. Something about Hagrid that they were referencing. I started getting head pain and then like this neck pain. So I'll move that here, like back here and up. And then it radiated to my head. I don't know what that means. Maybe that's how they died. Usually they'll make me feel how they died. Um. And it's like a sharp, dull, and achy pain simultaneously, which kind of makes no sense, but that's how it feels. I'm also, okay, I also see separately long braided hair, but it's like not attached to anything. Um, I don't know if that spirit saying this person had braid, like a braid in their hair or they braided things. I'm not quite sure. I feel like you've lost a lot of people like close together and it might have made you feel or question if you were cursed. The answer to that is no. I do not feel any curses in your bloodline. I understand your suspicion of it because of all of the events close together and what I was told was these events are to push you to an awakening phase. Now, people experience awakenings many different ways. You can experience it all in one shot and it's like you wake up one day and you're like, holy crap. Or it goes on periodically through your life. That's how it was for me. That's how it is for you. You're gonna have these aha moments and right now you're going to, or in the near, near future, you're going to have this awakening stage of this aha moment or Let's just say it's pushing you to an answer of a question that's been nagging you that will give you immense closure and calm down a good amount of a good amount of anxiety for you. That's your aha moment and that's pushing you to that realization slash like awakening moment. But again, it your awakening is like periodically. Then I started seeing an older woman, looks like she's 80. She's got a wrinkly face. Um, I sense sadness with her. She's got, like, fluffy white hair. She refers to Shadia as... Now, I don't know if she specifically says this or she's using these terms to show her relationship with her, but she kept saying, my doll, you're such a doll, sweetheart. So I feel like it's somebody close. And... Someone who's sweet but stern at times. It's giving grandmother vibes, not gonna lie. Oh, oh, I just got chills. So she checks in. She's checking in on you guys and on the children. She wished she had more time with both children, but she's making up for that now. She tries to calm the baby down when she cries and plays with the other daughter from time to time. And I keep seeing her with a dog. Did she have a dog that, you know, is no longer alive? Or did you guys have a dog that's no longer alive? They didn't show me the kind of dog, of course. They just, like, did the outline of the dog. Okay. Okay, I get it. The upstairs shadow thing, that's her. That's what I saw. That was her. Because I thought I saw it was her, and then I saw the dog in front of her. Okay, that makes sense. And the hunch part. Okay, that makes sense. That was weird. My camera made this weird focus thing and it looked like Mickey move, but it was the camera. Next set of images. I get dark hair, 
with dark beard. I start to cry when I see him. Again, I don't know who this is. So this one seems fresher or this person is someone very dear. He's a funny person, cracks jokes, likes to make people laugh, um, kind, empathic, love to cheer people up. All right, next part, section, set of images. I start seeing a large bedroom with more, like, I don't want to say it's feminine decor, but let's just say a guy wouldn't pick the decor in this bedroom. This bedroom, you know, isn't like a child's bedroom. It seems more like a guest room, if that makes sense. And it had more, like, neutrally tones or safe tones and slightly with some sophistication and it was catered to like someone older than 17 so it's not something I would decorate for a child like I said it feels more like a guest bedroom and I heard second in that room I saw a giant astral spider I hate astral spiders now that also will work on like consuming negative energy. I hate astral spiders with a passion and they hate me too. But the thing is, they are huge feeders of negative energy. I don't know if this is in your current house or I'm not quite sure. It looks like it's in your current house, but second. So either second room, second how, I don't, I'm not sure what the second part means, but honestly, the astral spider is more a concern to me than the thought form because of how fast and how much astral spiders drain people. I did keep seeing a bunch of different houses and they all had like a similar vibe to them all, old, rustic, and pretty. And then I started feeling an achy pain in my right wrist it feels like nerve pain, then it travels up my arm. Again, could be me. I'm overworking myself. But I thought I would bring it up just in case. So that is all I got. Again, I know it's kind of like a bunch of pieces and puzzle pieces scattered everywhere. And it's going to be hard to like put together. And I'm sorry for that, but that's how I get the information. To cleanse your space, you can do several things. Now, because you have a newborn baby gets a little tricky because I don't know how safe it is to do sage and palo santo wood like by cleansing your space with the both of them because you need both of them you need the palo santo after the sage oh I'm getting chest pains again mm, I feel like that might be you but yeah you need the palo santo to insert the positive energy when you extract all of the energy with the sage that's why you need both of them but you need to do that in your furthest rooms and work your way out to the door you use the most, which would probably be your front door, back door, whichever. But you can have your windows open when you do this, so you're not breathing in the smoke, which obviously you gotta do anyway so you don't breathe in the smoke. The other option is, there's this, they have sage spray with Palo Santo in it. You can use the energy mindfulness one that I have now, just so you know, this doesn't, this specific one, this specific brand, they don't have a standalone from what I see. It's in a candle set, but you don't have to buy that specific one. You can buy any sage spray with Palo Santo in it, and there are cheaper options for that on Amazon. And no, I'm not affiliated with anything, um, so I would recommend doing that to cleanse out that negative energy. And if you start having anxiety attacks, I'm looking for my, okay, my holy oils in another room. If you start having bouts of anxiety attacks and things, part of that is the thought form, part of that's the astral spider. A lot of it's the astral spider. But you can put dabs of that on all your chakras. That is like the best thing. That, I highly recommend that for everybody like that works the best at least for me everyone's different but it's actually not that expensive and again Amazon Amazon's pretty lit for other protection things 
Lights of Midnight podcast. Chas and I, we have a protection episode that we did that's two hours and 21 minutes. So you can always reference that because we go through all the different cleansing methods and what you can do. There's a lot of stuff. And if you need help, just DM me on Instagram. We can do it privately. It doesn't have to like be showcased. Like I don't care. I'm not about that. I'd rather help people than get the views from it and the likes. I don't care. The whole point of my platform is to help people and to help as many as I can. If you need more instruction or clarification on cleansing, DM me on Instagram. Mr. Mo Sarji, I don't know if this was just one big, you know, cluster F, or if any of this makes sense to you. But I feel like you question, because of the amount of loss you have had, Recently, you're questioning, like, where do we go when we die? I feel like that question is going to be answered for you in this video because th no one's gone forever. They're still there. Their physical body may not be there any longer. Their consciousness is still around because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It only transforms. So just because the physical body no longer exists, that energy still has to go somewhere. It is science. Yeah, hopefully this video helped you in some way. I hope it did. If you have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments and anybody else too. And if this reading is familiar to, or if this reading makes sense to other people, you can also apply it to yourself because a lot of times these messages can be piggybacked from other spirits relaying information for the people in the comment section, which is so strange to me, by the way. It's, it just, I don't know, it amazes me. Help me get this message to Mo Sarji by sharing it to him so he sees it. That would be great, because I feel like it'll be very helpful to him. But thanks everybody for sticking around and I hope to see you soon. Peace. If you like these types of videos, I highly recommend that you watch the Sam and Colby, specifically Colby Brock message I delivered to him from Spirit. Spirit had a lot to say for him.